Hey, hey, hey! Thank you for joining us again on Friday. What are we going to call it? Beethoven Fridays? I don't know. Uh, we have a very special guest. We have our Charlotte, one of our leads. Naomi will be with us in just a second. But first, for those of you who are uh, keeping tabs on what's happening with Beethoven, we got a very generous donation from Louise Mundiger. Thank you so much, Louise. She got us closer to our $5,000 goal by getting us up to forty-five thirty-five. dollars We are so close. If you want to help contribute, please go to uh, Funding beethoven.com um we also got some word that we are going to be in some theaters uh right now we've got theaters in uh brooklyn new york riverside california portage indian middletown delaware rochester hills michigan spring hill florida lakeville minnesota west melbourne florida and north kansas city missouri we'll make sure those of you who live in those areas know exactly where to go find us um and we'll keep you guys posted as we develop with more but, okay, without further ado, here is the one and only, Naomi Drusik, who I can never say her last name, so she's going to tell us how to say it right. <laughs> hey, Naomi. Hi. Uh, so, Giz, close your mic as you can. Um, and those of you watching, please throw in comments and uh, questions as we go. Um, so, Naomi plays Charlotte in our film. She's the one who causes Josh all the drama. Um, Naomi came in for an audition for us, played piano, and blew our minds we had no choice but to cast her as our charlotte and i will say naomi my biggest regret i still to this day i have is i never gave you a really complicated solo piece in the movie i don't know how chris and i let that slip our minds we were too busy giving you toy pianos and other weird shit to do um it's fun it's better so Naomi informed me that she was 19 when she, we started this, and she's about to turn 23. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, so Naomi, tell everybody, you know, a little bit more about you, like where you're living, because um, I mean, you really traveled far to come see us. And do you remember what the audition process was like and traveling back and forth? Yeah, I do. So I have to go back. Uh, it was three years ago, so my 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 memories are blurred. oh i know <laughs> it was it was very exciting i remember there was like a princess theme, big uh, like horse so how you call that oh yeah the uh madden clark studios has that big cinderella ball thing out there uh, the pumpkin the yeah. pumpkin that travels into a horse riding the thingy and then it goes with cinderella Anyways, that was the first thing that marked my eye, and I was like, "Wow, look at this! <laughs> I'm going to Disney." You you flew here from Bosnia on your own, right? Yeah, by the way, Bosnia Herzegovina, Herzegovina, whatever you like. Um, and we because we didn't know that. So when she came in to audition, we just assumed she lived in LA. And then when we found out she didn't, we were like, "Well, you can't keep flying here for." For stuff, I guess we'll just cast you now. <laughs> I think that's kind of what happened. Um, <laughs> do you remember uh, what one of some of the hardest parts about doing this kind of role where you had to not only play music live, but learn a crap ton of lines because the movie is really just you and Josh, uh, uh, played by Eric Floyd? Uh, the first thing, like the first scene, if you remember when we shot the first scene of the movie, was like about almost the last scene, like when the culmination, when everything happened in the movie, mm -hmm. when it exploded, that was the first scene we shot. And I remember you telling me, like, go prepare yourself, go into a room, 
take your notes, take your time, go into the role, go everything. And I sit and I prepare and I'm fair and I'm like, good, this is going to be good. Take a deep breath, everything is good. You got into the act, okay. Then I come into the set where I felt like there was thousands of people around me. <laughs> the world's spinning in slow motion around you. <laughs> functions that way it's my first set ever and first role is like i'm devastated i'm crying i'm it's the end of the world for me then someone i think collier was making a joke he's laughing dave is laughing you're laughing everyone's laughing and it's a whole other situation from the one that i have to be in yeah so i was like how how do people do this how do they ignore everything that is around them and get into the role. So I was just surprised like, to hear we were laughing stressed. at all because I remember is. lots of that yelling. Was... Say it again. Oh, do you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. It, it just cuts out once in a while. Good morning, Sandy. Thank you for joining us. Um, when it, it's hard, so it was Naomi's first feature film, which is a huge undertaking, especially as a lead. It's a very big story, uh, you know, big emotional arc you have to take. There's a lot of trust that you have to put into your director. Um, I, I actually, I remember the emotional scene. I honestly don't remember laughing because I remember being very stressed that we were running behind, that it was taking forever for them to light. Like it was cold and crap outside. Uh, it's kind of good to hear that there's at least some laughter happening in the middle of all that stress. But that um, was the hardest John, because it was yeah. um, John L. Curtis, our Milo, is watching, and he says, "What well, was there a favorite piece that Naomi liked playing in the movie? Favorite piece? Do you even remember what you played? A little bit. I do. <laughs> uh, Chris made... Chris made uh, the pathetic sonata in his own way, like in a jazzy way. And we actually played that the whole time. Right? Um, well, I have a clip to remind you of one of your things you played. Uh, this is uh, the meet cute. This is when Charlotte first meets, um, I want to say Eric, but no, Josh is his name in the movie. Do you hear him? I can't go anywhere. Shouldn't you be practicing too? Even if you're not in the competition, like Zaboff expects it. Consider that a tip from one of his most abused students. So you practice because he tells you? I practice because I want to win the competition. I want to have a career. So... Are you coming with me? You know... I could help you. Help me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it like culture shock seeing yourself in a in the scene for the first time oh my god i'm so excited for it coming up now okay that's a good reaction because you know normally the reaction is like i hate everything about it why are you putting this film out so i'm glad to hear you like it you're really adorable in it. Um, I'm going to bring on a little special guest here. I am going to bring out the one and only composer of our film, uh, Chris Edgar. Hey, Chris. Because uh, Chris, you and Naomi spent a lot more time together, I think, than she and I did. Right. Including with me driving sometimes. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, I don't normally get to do that, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't normally get to rehearse with the cast at all for, you know, for film music purposes. So being able to work with, with Naomi and Eric as much as I did. Yeah. That was, that was pretty amazing. What do you think the hardest part was when you remember back? Like there was, I remember Naomi struggling with a certain thing, but I want to see if you, do you guys remember her biggest struggle when it came to the music and the uh, improvisation of it, sort of the, the improvisation of it, air quotes. <laughs> 
Well, I think I was making, I, I, I was having Naomi play jazz, which I think she hadn't done before, but yeah, right. you, but, but you, you, I mean, you made it sound, yeah, you, you, you made it sound amazing. So, you know, yes, you, right. you were a natural. Do you remember that Naomi being like, what is this music you're trying to get me and my fingers to do? <laughs> you're pretty much strictly, you were strictly classical, right? Before. Oh, uh, yes. Classical, but I do improvisations, just not jazz harmonies. Uh, I never would have known. Like you were so seamless in everything you did. Naomi, for those of you watching, was a is a perfectionist. People think I'm a perfectionist. This one made us play the dueling piano song. <laughs> I was like, sounds great. Chris is like, it sounds great. Naomi was like, no, we gotta do it again. <laughs> do you remember that? Well, you know what? I'm gonna show you. Uh, I think it was a good idea you had us do it again because here's a little tiny bit of the final piece. <laughs> so much more what's next yeah. i don't know i guess you have to go buy it on november 26 when it comes yeah. out or go to the movies and see it yeah. uh, um naomi i think you should tell everybody your background because you have a very cool music background i mean the thing the places you've played how long you've been playing i would love you to tell everybody that stuff don't be shy brag about it all oh, oh dear. I started playing when I was, I think, five years old, I think. So I remember I was uh, uh, playing the dancing ballet at that time, like all little girls do, like in Latina, I'm a Barbie. <laughs> so uh, we were having, um, um, how do you do that? Dancing like in front of people. So two girls came across. Uh, who played the piano then, and they started playing for uh, Beethoven's Elisa for Elise. Da -da 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 -dum. That, and I sat down for the piano. It was interesting for me. It was the first time I saw a piano, and I was like, I want to play this. And I started playing something, and the girls were like, uh, How long have you been playing? And I said, I haven't. It's my first time touching the piano. And they're like, Wow, you're so good. <laughs> So I go home and I tell my mother, like, can I go learn the piano? And she's like, yes, we can. We can go to the, the music school tomorrow. You have an audition there. Aww. They are for that. Or if you aren't because someone has a pitch, ear pitch, someone doesn't. So sometimes they don't let children study on the elementary music school. So I came there and uh, it was Vanessa, the professor, I remember her. I started playing and she was like, how long have you been playing? And I said, I just, this is maybe my second time that I've been touching the piano. I haven't been playing before. And she said, wow, nice. Uh, you play like you have been playing before. We can get you in. You can start Aww. tomorrow. No, 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 no. So I was very excited and I started learning the piano. Now the interesting thing is the first three years of my playing of the piano, so since like five to eight, I never knew notes. I learned specifically only by a pitch, by sound. I never knew the notes. I That's crazy. Out. So my professor, she plays something for me. I hear that. I repeat that. And I go, I went for my first competition like that. Wow. That's hmm. how I learned it. I never knew notes. And I got the first prize then. Or <sighs> I'm not sure, but it was good. <laughs> so after that, I had my first... Um, my, my brain was... Well, when did you... What age were you when you played Carnegie Hall? 11 or 12. Did you know how special it was when you were doing it, or you were just like, eh, it's another cool performance? Another cool performance. Every time, anywhere I played, it was just a cool performance. I'm telling you, I go, I had my job, I sit there, I play my stuff, 
I don't see these people. I don't see anyone. I don't care where I am. You're in the world. I just go sit, play, and go back. <laughs> go sit on the floor. Oh, I love it. Well, I'm so I I love that your mom like put you in right when you came home and said you wanted to do it because I mean, what a talent you've become. And hopefully, mom, when you watch the movie, you'll be so proud that you actually did that. You can take all the credit for her good her good yetta work. Um, so, what is up next? Like, what are you doing? You're 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 in um, back home in Bosnia, right? Yes, but I'm planning on coming back to LA in months maybe or a year depending on the process that is cool <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing to keep so, yourself busy um, there do, are, you, are you doing any kind of concerts or acting or anything i'm not doing concerts or acting uh the last thing that i did here like a few days ago is a play for the national theater of sarajevo of <clears throat> our nice. place where we live here and it was a play by Pokar Mladenovic, she's a famous, uh, famous director for TV in Balkan. I played the uh, music for the whole play, so the play is like kind of Mickey Mousing. In the style of Mickey Mousing, the music, so it's uh, supporting the roles throughout the whole play. It's, hours long so i have to be focused for two hours every step someone takes every move someone makes i have to look so i can play and i can accent that so that is very fun wow um, i'm studying the competition which makes me very happy because that's something that i always wanted to learn because i always had a part of me that was uh, composing making my own stuff i go play chopin and then i do something for myself i change it up i always do something my way so i decided the best thing i could do, do is learn that study that and upgrade my knowledge about music in that uh, path and it's and basically like charlotte i like i i want to do it my way i love it it's great she, she uh, just had to play herself yeah sandy says it's so inspiring that you followed your dream so early in life I agree. I love it. I, um, I'm very thankful for my parents and for my mother especially because she is the one that supports me throughout all of that. She's the one that said, okay, you can do that. Okay, you can go there. Okay, I believe in you. And she is the one who believed in me and that's why I had the opportunities. Uh, a lot of people don't have opportunities that I had as yeah. others. So I'm very thankful for we're yeah. grateful she flew you out, let you follow your dreams here in LA too for our little movie, our little baby movie that's finally being birthed. Yeah. If we told you guys it's going to be November 26th, if we say it enough, right? Am I saying it's funny? It's like I keep going, am I saying the right date? Wouldn't it be funny if I keep saying this date and it's completely wrong? It, it, it's the right date. You've got it right so far. <laughs> November 26th, November 26th. People are going to wake up in cold sweats. I have to do something on November 26th. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> it's watch Beethoven. Um, and uh, so for final notes, uh, Naomi, what's the big dream? So you're going to come to L.A. And what do you really want to do with your what, what do you, where do you see your career heading? What do you, what would be the big dream in, say, five years, 10 years? Yes, I would love I would love I would be the happiest I could be a composer for movies, for film, for TV that can really impact on uh leave an impact on someone so that is my goal uh, whether i do piano whether i do composing whether i do acting my only goal and everything of that is to leave any impact emotional impact on the audience so if i achieve that i'm happy you can be crying you can be laughing you can be remembering something it doesn't matter the important thing is that it awakes something in you that you can feel something watching hearing listening it doesn't matter so hopefully if god is uh i can accomplish that one day chris our little naomi's all grown up <laughs> we went from like naomi being like i don't even know what i'm supposed to do in this in the film to like i'm right. gonna make a mark on the damn world well, that, i that love it that's what happens when the, the film takes four years to be made, but yeah, it's going to be worth the wait. Yeah. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> well, 
Well, you know, that's that's independent film. It it can take a long time to get all the moving parts to work together. But yeah, I mean, we kept we kept pushing at it um, for, you know, the the four years that it took. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing that finally we're doing it. I was it's 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 funny because like I know Naomi was one. She'd regularly be like, do we have any news yet? Has anything happened yet? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) It's so hard. But, you know, a lot of films never get finished. So, hey, at least we finished and we'll be in some theaters. So, hey. Hey. Um, also, Naomi, when you know you know, you have this genius composer now, you have to make Chris let you a- apprentice with him. And Definitely. Chris is always looking for help, huh, Chris? That's Definitely. true. I have to make uh, like a portfolio of stuff that I do because everything I did now, I'm not I'm not happy with that at, at the most. It's not perfect. <laughs> it has yeah. to be perfect. So when I get it to be perfect, I'm gonna make a list uh, or SoundCloud or YouTube private. And then I'm going to send it to you and I'm going to use it as my portfolio. So here is what I can do. You know what I mean? You know, uh, ask Chris, nothing's ever perfect. He will literally be like, okay, here's the final mix of the song. This is good. And then like two hours later, wait, wait, no, here's one more mix. I promise. Last one. And then three days later, no, no, come on. One more mix. That's it. I'm not, I'm done. I promise. Yeah. I mean, the mixing is something that I have ended up obsessing over even more than the composition because, um, that's the area where I feel like I still am, am you know, and, and, well, I'm, I mean, I'm always learning in every area, but you I mean, there, but there's always something to get the compression tweaked correctly or something like that, or um, that, or, or the, uh, the size of the reverb room or something like that. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that you've already discovered this. Uh, yeah, I think Naomi, when you watch the film with your perfectionist self, you gotta remember, movies never play music live on set. Yeah. I mean, so rare. And we did it. And you played piano pieces that were literally, we didn't even cut them. Like it's you playing no cuts, no, mo- no, like uh, putting d- different p- pieces together. Like you really got to give yourself a little bit of leeway. So don't be upset with yourself. Cause I know you know me in the theater. Like, Oh man, I screwed that one note up. You played it live. <laughs> like, it's awesome. Um, Sandy asking, where can I get a poster? That's so funny. I literally just had this poster made up because I figured we might need something for our premiere. Um, should we sell things? Should we sell posters should, and mugs? Should we have official t-shirt? merch? Yeah. We could do it. Um, yeah. This was not cheap because it was a solo purchase, but I'll figure out a way to get them on a website so it's cheaper for everybody. But um, And Sandy, thank you for being such a good supporter. You've been here all, most of our lives and you've you know given us money and cheered us on thank you uh naomi thank you for joining us from far far away we do hope that there's a way to get you here for the premiere later this yeah. month so we'll keep talking about that yeah premiere. Yeah, we'll talk about that um once we get get rid of everybody here i'm supposed to push buttons and then i'm supposed to say uh, things like i don't know november 26 yeah go to fundingbeethoven.com help us out i don't know things like that <laughs> bye guys see you next friday